People hate on wingers with low GA. Like Lamine had 10 GA in the league last year, but he's top five in the world in this position. How do you define what makes a good winger? Is it if he can beat his defender? I think not even for a winger, but in every position, the way you should be judged and rated is the value you bring on the pitch for your role. That's the way I look at it. So this is why for me, whenever people talk about GA, who has more GA, that's who, what makes a better player. Not for me, bro. And that's why for me, I rate a player like Drogba so much, even though his GA is not as high as a guy. Like I think Darren Bent scored more goals in the Prem than Drogba. But for me, I, I see a lot of people saying the goal of a, a player is to score goals. Goals win games. Goals are the most important thing in football. I don't agree. I think the most important thing in football is winning games. So scoring goals is a way to win a game, but it's not the only way you can help your team win. Helping your team win is your major priority not just scoring a goal. Saying scoring a goal is your job in football is almost like saying, oh, if you score a goal, your job on the pitch is done. You guys understand what I'm saying? Like people who say, oh, a, a player's job is to score goals. No, it's not. A player's job is to help their team win. So if a player scores a goal in the first minute, a tap in, and then doesn't do anything the rest of the game, he loses the ball every time the ball is brought to him. He's offside every single time. He loses the ball for the other team to score. He didn't do his job just because he scored a goal. And I look at that in every single position. So yes, some players' jobs on the pitch is to score goals, but I don't think that your role on the pitch ends once you score that goal, if you get what I mean. So there are players, for example, that don't score many goals at all, but the value that they bring onto the, onto the pitch the way they help their team win, which again is my priority for a player, makes up for the fact that they don't score. And in more ways, they're more important than a guy who could score you a goal more than that guy. You look at a guy like Modric, you look at a guy like Iniesta, their GA numbers aren't that high, but what do they offer you? Drogba as well too, wasn't the most prolific goal scorer, but the value he brought to you as a center forward, the hold up play, the terrorizing the defenders, the physical skill set, that just in general, a the way he shifts defenses, he helps your team win outside of just goals. So that's not me downplaying GA, by the way. Obviously, GA is important. But um, a guy like Lamine Yamal, I wouldn't judge him, especially at this age in his career, because I also think GA output is something that kind of comes, end product comes as you get older, as you get more experienced, as... It also is, for me, system-based. It depends, like, the coach who's coaching you, the way the team is built around you, but... For me, the most important thing for any footballer is how do you help your team win, not how many goals do you score. The goals might help, that might be the way you help, but it doesn't, it's not the be all end all for me. And I think most coaches would tell you the same exact thing. Most people, most coaches would tell you the exact same thing. How are you helping my team win is the priority for every single player, not scoring a goal. That's not, by the way, saying that if you have bad end product, like it's a good thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to excuse players like that. So with your point, how does Harry Kane get so many ratings? Absolutely hate it. Well, I think a lot of, look, this is not about Harry Kane in general, but I think Twitter in general, their perception of what makes a player good is if he scores or not, or if he has high GA, but I can't lie. Rating players and judging players and comparing players on GA for me is, is pointless because also GA completely negates anything you watched at the time. You can basically tell the story of a game through GA without ever watching a game, but it doesn't tell the full story of a football game, how a player played. Like for me personally, I didn't think Harry Kane played a good game whatsoever against Denmark, but somebody who watched the game, and this is what you often hear, oh yeah, Kane didn't play that well, but he left of a goal. So that's okay. His performance is okay then just because he scored a goal. I don't agree. Saw someone say that the eye test only helps see dribbling. Yeah, but these are the same people then. Why even watch the game? If, if what we see doesn't matter, why even watch the game? If realistically, the eye test doesn't matter whatsoever, then we have no reason to watch a game. I, we shouldn't be... Guys, the watch long is done. We don't want to watch this. I'll just tell you after on uh, FB ref what each player's graph is saying after the game. Come on, man. This is the only generation that has ever spoken like this, by the way. So 100 sideways passes are equal to 10 passes that let the big chances created. I didn't say that. But a player that helps keep his team in control of the ball and make sure that the other team can't get near him, which then allows a player further up the pitch to create those chances created. That's my whole point here. Just because that player created the chances, it's like it didn't just magically appear at that playmaker's feet. A guy like Xavi or a guy like Pirlo or a guy like Kroos who are consistently keeping the ball ticking and registering high amounts of touches and stuff like that, their value for the team is extremely high and some would argue just as high as the guy who then picks it up off Cruz to be able to create that chance. Because if your team doesn't retain the ball and it doesn't see it whatsoever, the only hope that a playmaker gets is in transition. So if Cross isn't even there or like a player like that isn't even there to, to help his team keep the ball and retain it, the playmaker might not, might not ever even get the ball in that position to begin with. That's, that's my whole point. My whole point is football is an 11-man sport, so every player on the pitch serves a role. And this idea now that the goal scorer's role is more valuable than any other player on the pitch, this is that's what, for me, it doesn't really sit well with me. Because the ball doesn't just spawn to the striker's feet.